Hey, 42 here. Every so often, news of an impending apocalypse hits the global headlines. Sometimes, rumours of these imminent end times come from the translated writings of an ancient civilization. Sometimes they crop up in the ramblings of a sociopathic cult leader. And sometimes they're in highly interpreted quotes from prophecies made by the likes of Nostradamus or Baba Vanga. Wherever they come from, these predictions all have one thing in common. Not a single one of them has ever come true. Obviously. No matter what fiery death is promised or by whom, the world keeps on turning and the sun continues to rise. That's all very reassuring. But unfortunately, that reassurance is completely false. Because, and I'm really sorry to be the one to have to tell you this, the world actually is coming to an end. Don't worry, I haven't decided to start my own doomsday cult. The impending earthly apocalypse I'm referring to here is actually a scientific certainty. Our world is ending, and if we fail to act, the human race will die. That's the bad news. I thought I'd get it out of the way first. The good news is, we have quite a long time to get our plans for survival in place before any existential feces impacts the spinning mechanical ventilation system. It's a strange paradox that whilst we aren't all that great at predicting what the weather will be like in a month or even a week from now, we know with a fairly high degree of certainty what will happen in our universe millions or even billions of years in the future. That's because modern science has reached a sufficiently advanced level that we can accurately simulate important cosmological processes, like the life cycle of stars and the ultimate fate of black holes. Using that information, we know exactly how long we have left before the real-life apocalypse arrives and Earth is no longer habitable by humans. It's about a billion years, but more on that in a second. The trouble is, having this information isn't all that useful to us. You see, we humans are naturally short-termist. The global average life expectancy stands at just shy of 73 years. As your friendly neighbourhood OAP will no doubt tell you, that isn't a very long time. Which is probably why, as a species, we tend to live in the moment. We care about ourselves, our families, our friends, our children and grandchildren. But our distant descendants, a hundred, two hundred, a thousand years from now? Screw those high-tech bastards! But the fact of the matter is, we're standing on the cusp of an incredible opportunity. From what we can see so far, we seem to have this little corner of the universe pretty much to ourselves. That should give us the time and space to spread out a bit and make ourselves properly comfy. If we're able to do that, we'll soon find ourselves in a pretty remarkable position. With human colonies spread light years apart throughout the galaxy, our species will become extremely resilient to all known forms of existential threat. Things like famine and disease are meaningless on a galactic scale, and wars pretty much can't be waged when travel times between stars are measured in thousands of years. Sure, we may one day have to worry about unfriendly neighbours, but the universe is big and getting bigger. So there's no guarantee we'll ever meet anyone else up close. If we don't, and if spreading out a bit makes us effectively unkillable in all the traditional ways that we're familiar with, there's every reason to believe the human race could survive for a very, very long time. Millions of years, perhaps. Billions trillions? It's genuinely possible that you and I are amongst the early pioneers of a civilization that will stand as the universe itself collapses around us, untold eons in the future. Okay, so maybe I'm just getting a touch ahead of myself, but my point still stands. If we humans are able to make it through these awkward teenage years of acne and atomic bombs, and that's a big if, who knows how far we could go? There are certainly some hefty challenges standing in our way, though. The first of which will be getting the hell off this death trap we call Earth. As of today, every single human being alive is currently on or near the surface of our home planet. From a project planning perspective, you have to admit, 
it's a bit of a disaster. I mean, seriously, who's in charge here? For now, all it would take to bring up humanity's collective game over screen is an errant asteroid, a well-aimed coronal mass ejection, a nuclear war, or a particularly nasty pandemic. Nice try, by the way, COVID. Any of these things could spell the end of Homo sapiens in the coming centuries. But for the purpose of this video, I want to think a bit bigger. So let's just assume we get our act together and sort all that stuff out. That we get over all our differences and stop trying to kill each other, figure out how to deflect or destroy any asteroids, and manage to shield our infrastructure from any bullshit the sun sends our way. If we do all of that, then we have about a billion years of safety left to us here on Earth. That's a pretty long time, about 5,000 times longer than our species has existed so far. But we can't afford to faff around, because when that billion years is up, planet Earth will experience an actual honest-to-God apocalypse. As our sun ages, it will slowly grow larger and brighter, increasing in luminosity at a rate of about 1% every 100 million years or so. A billion years from now, the sun will be releasing about 10% more energy than it does today, leading to catastrophic global warming that will eventually see surface temperatures on our lush home planet hit a, frankly, uncomfortable 350 degrees Celsius boiling away the oceans and making the atmosphere unbreathable. But whilst an expanding sun will do terrible things for housing prices here on Earth, estate agents over on Mars will be having a field day. As the sun grows hotter, our solar system's habitable zone, the range of orbits in which a planet could support liquid water on its surface, will be pushed further outwards making the previously frigid Mars, where surface temperatures are about minus 60 degrees Celsius today, a much more palatable proposition. Particularly when you consider the fact that there are more than 5 million cubic kilometers of ice on Mars's surface, just waiting to be melted into lovely deep oceans. Not that we can let the sun do all the work. There would still be plenty of manual terraforming to be done. The atmosphere would need to be made breathable for one thing, but a billion years should be enough time to get all of those little details ironed out. Mars will only ever be a temporary stop, though. As the sun continues to grow larger, brighter, and hotter, even Mars will one day be too toasty for us humans to handle, forcing us to seek sanctuary deeper and deeper into the solar system. The gas giants are unlikely to ever make good homes for humans, but several of their moons might. Europa, which orbits Jupiter, is thought to hide a vast ocean beneath its icy surface that holds three times as much water as all of Earth's oceans combined. So that might be a good place to start. And when Europa gets too hot, Saturn's moon Titan, the only moon in the solar system that has a dense atmosphere like Earth, might be our next step. But eventually there will come a time where nowhere in our solar system is safe anymore. Five billion years from now, our sun will have used up its supply of hydrogen entirely, at which point it will enter the red giant phase of its evolution. As a red giant, the sun will grow to truly mind-boggling proportions, about 250 times its current size, large enough to swallow the orbits of Mercury, Venus and Earth entirely. The sun won't ever go supernova, it's too small for that but it will eventually render the entirety of our solar system uninhabitable. And that will be our cue to leave. With the ancestral home of humanity essentially dead to us, the next task on the agenda will be to find another star with some nice non-vaporized planets where we can make ourselves a new home. But here's a catch. As of today, 95% of all the stars that will ever exist in our universe have already been born. And five billion years from now, when we're in search of a new home, many of them will have already reached the end of their life cycles, just like our sun. Luckily, not all stars age at the same speed. Somewhat counterintuitively, the smaller a star is, the longer its lifespan. Because whilst large stars contain more hydrogen fuel, they burn it far more quickly than smaller ones do. Our sun is a mid-sized yellow dwarf with a lifespan of about 10 billion years. 
The smallest class of main sequence stars, the red dwarfs, have an average lifespan of several trillion years, meaning they'll live hundreds of times longer than the universe has existed so far. If we can find ourselves a nice small red dwarf to live near, we could set ourselves up without any major dramas for the next 10 trillion years or so. That's a very long time. So long that it's actually pretty hard for our puny human minds to comprehend it. We throw these kinds of numbers around a lot, billion, trillion, without ever really appreciating just how vast they are. If you were to count to a million, one second at a time, non-stop, it would take you about 11 days. That's a long time to spend counting, but probably just doable with the help of some intravenous Red Bull. So how long do you think it would take to count to a billion in the same way? One number per second. A few weeks? Six months? Try 31 years. And counting to a trillion would take more than 31,000 years. As luck would have it, the nearest star to our solar system, Proxima Centauri, just so happens to be a red dwarf with trillions of years in the tank. So we won't have to go far when the solar system apocalypse finally arrives. Of course, not far is relative on a galactic scale. Proxima Centauri is about 4.2 light years away. That's 24 and a half trillion miles. Using today's technology, that kind of journey is quite literally impossible. It would take tens of thousands of years, even with our fastest ships. And we'd need to build something the size of a small city to house a colony large enough to make the journey without inbreeding itself to death. Still, several billions of years of now, the chances are good that we'd be up to the task. But even the red dwarfs won't last forever. In 100 trillion years, all the excess hydrogen in existence will have been consumed and star formation in our universe will cease altogether. One by one, the final stars ever to shine will begin to wink out. If human beings do manage to make it this far, it's safe to say it's going to be a pretty bloody scary time, with everything slowly fading to black around us. But as unnerving as it will no doubt be, there is a way to turn the lights back on, at least temporarily bashing brown dwarfs together like giant conkers, naturally. Brown dwarfs are commonly referred to as failed stars because they're too small to do star things like fuse hydrogen in their cores, but large enough to do distinctly unplanety things like fuse lithium and deuterium. Brown dwarfs emit almost no visible light and so wouldn't make useful replacement suns but they do contain all the raw ingredients needed for a genuine star. All they lack is the mass to create core temperatures hot enough to ignite hydrogen fusion. With our 100 trillion years in the future technology, we should simply be able to whiz about the galaxy, scooping up brown dwarfs and mashing them together to form proper hydrogen fusing stars. It's thought that this process will occasionally occur naturally for about the next quintillion years or so, creating handfuls of impossibly remote stars alone in the vastness of the ever-darkening universe. Okay, by now we really are getting absurdly far into the future, and the truth is, we don't actually know for sure whether our universe will still even exist at that point. I mentioned at the start of this video that modern science can see deep into the future, and that's true to a certain extent, but it's also kind of not true. We know quite a lot about star life cycles and black holes, but as yet, we don't really know when the universe will end or even how. And our best estimates as to the when part vary so wildly as to be almost meaningless. The universe might end in 22 billion years in a so-called big rip that sees dark matter tear space-time apart. Or it might end in significantly more than a Google years. That's a one with 100 zeros after it, when the universe reaches a state of thermal equilibrium known as heat death. Whichever one of these cheery scenarios marks the end of, well, everything, even that doesn't necessarily have to be the final page in the never-ending story of humanity. 
Though surviving beyond the end of the universe would certainly require technology so advanced that, as Arthur C. Clarke would say, it would seem like magic to us today. If we did have access to some serious techno magic, perhaps we could use it to counter the expansionary forces of dark energy to prevent the big rift. Or maybe we could use it to somehow trade our wrinkly old universe in for a sexier younger model by traveling into a parallel world. Only time will tell. Like, a lot of time. You may think it's a bit ridiculous to even consider our species surviving to the very end of the universe, considering the sorry state of things here on Earth today. And, uh, yeah, it is. Right now, our species faces, undoubtedly, its most dangerous period since we were just a bunch of defenseless apes, first figuring out all the cool things we could do with sticks. War is an ever-present threat, the climate is constantly doing weird things, and space threatens us with catastrophes that we simply have no way of dealing with right now. But if we do somehow manage to pass through this bottleneck, the Great Filter, if that's what it is, there really is no reason why our species can't go on to found a dynasty that stands for thousands of years, and perhaps much longer. As far as I'm concerned, it's worth a shot. Thanks for watching.